Hi and welcome back. We're going to start looking at the causes of delinquency in the next few modules. And I want to start with chapter 14 in Agnew and Brasina, looking at the impact of the family on delinquency. Now, the family really takes us back to the four major theories we've just studied. As Agnew and Brasina point out, the family, perhaps more than any other societal institution, has the potential to reduce stress or strain. It's where the juvenile often learns to conform or to deviate. It influences social control over the individual, and it also often plays a major role in the extent to which the individual is labeled or responds to being labeled. One major question that often arises when studying the family is whether juveniles from so-called so broken homes are more likely to engage in delinquent behavior. Unfortunately, there's no clear-cut answer on this. You'll hear a lot about it in politics, that, for example, intact traditional families are the only answer to reducing delinquency. You'll also hear that the family has no real effect. There is research to support both of these perspectives. Some studies show that juveniles from broken homes engage in just as much delinquency as juveniles from intact homes. But bear this in mind. When we do see more delinquency among juveniles from broken homes, it is often from arrest rates, not self-report data. That is to say, there may be a bit of labeling at play here in that the police tend to keep an eye out for children from broken homes and therefore see their delinquent behavior. But self-report studies show that just as many juveniles from intact families engage in delinquent behavior. They're just not believed to be delinquent, so they're not singled out by the police. Other questions to consider when looking at the family include whether the increase in mothers working outside the home has had an effect on more delinquent behavior. The answer, quite simply, is no. Research doesn't support this hypothesis. There is no relationship between mothers working outside the home and an increase in delinquency. Further, there is little significant research to support the hypothesis that putting children in daycare facilities increases their likelihood of delinquent behavior. Rather, the opposite is often true. As children in child care facilities begin to socialize with peers and adults at an earlier age, uh, they tend to be taught coping mechanisms for strain and tend to learn social controls at a younger age. Nevertheless, there is some research to support that child care facilities, in particular those of low quality, can have a negative influence on child behavior. So be sure you take a look at the research in Chapter 14 on this question. Okay, the next question to consider is whether juveniles with criminal or deviant parents and siblings are more likely to be delinquent. And the research here is much stronger and much more a yes. Juveniles with a criminal parent or parents are more likely to engage in delinquent behavior. Thinking back to the theories we've studied, consider why this might be so. Social learning theory is an obvious explanation. I hope you agree. But criminal or deviant parents are also less likely to establish strong emotional bonds with their children, so social control theory comes into play here. Similarly, criminal or deviant parents may also get into more conflict with each other, which increases strain on the child. And finally, children who grow up in criminal or deviant families may themselves be labeled as coming from a bad family, and therefore labeling theory is also a major player. Be sure to check out in Chapter 14 what parents can do to teach their children to avoid delinquency. We're going to come back to this later in the term when we start talking about ways to reduce delinquency. A good section to read is Box 14.1 on whether parents are becoming too permissive. Read through it and see what you think. All right, so that's Chapter 14. I'll see you online for the quiz and discussion forum. Have a great week.